here today with Thomas Rail, uh, Al former Alabama football player and Alabama legend, actually. Uh, Thomas blocked a kick in the 1989 Penn State Alabama game to preserve the victory for Alabama. Uh, we're here today at the Great Cross State Challenge uh, 5K race at Oak Mountain State Park, Pelham, Alabama. Uh, Thomas works for Mash, Mash Medical Accessories. And he's here today to support the uh, cause of prostate cancer awareness. Uh, Thomas, tell us what it felt like in 1989 when you went up and blocked that kick. Well, I still get goosebumps every time I talk about that play because, you know, it, that play now, uh, it stands high on our walls. And uh, a lot of kids that I work with in the community, the Team Ram Outreach, uh, benefits from that play a whole lot. Every summer we work kids out for free. It, it provides water and ice, a lot of comfort for a lot of kids who have anything to do in the summertime. So, I mean, it, it's not just a, a, a play that, you know, hang on the wall and, and everybody goes by once a year or anytime we play Penn State. And remember, I mean, the desperation block is now every day. Well, it will certainly always uh, stick out in my mind as one of the greatest plays in Alabama history. I work for MASH Medical Accessories, and how I got involved with the Prostate Challenge uh, race today is going in, talking with Dr. Moody, and, and, and all of a sudden somebody recognizing a last name that's totally unusual in, in Rayum. So I walked in, and Dr. Moody said, you're Thomas Ram, you blocked the kick at Penn State. I'm like, no, yeah, but I sell medical supplies here for MASH Medical. Uh, we've been in the business now for 35 years. He's like, yeah, 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 I understand all that. But, <laughs> hey, give me an autograph on this block picture. And I said, well, this picture here, Dr. Moody, actually helps all my kids at my outreach. He said, well, I want five of those pictures, and I want to buy all the water I possibly can buy to help these kids stay off the streets and come to uh, Wednesday night meetings that you hold. So, you know, through MASH, through MASH Medical Accessories and through Urology Centers of Alabama, uh, the 5K got Thomas Ram out here in the morning at 6 o'clock to come out and hand out donuts and water and, and make everybody's day enjoyable. So I really appreciate being out here with, uh, with the prostate cancer uh, survivors also and uh, enjoying a beautiful day. Uh, Curtis, my oldest brother, he's, 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 he's the oldest. Um, Curtis, Curtis set the standard early. I mean, he graduated from high school and in, in 69 and I was born in 68 um, you know my mom carried me with a tumor and at birth they said not to not to have the, do the liver because we both wouldn't live six months mm -hmm. um, that in turn you know is the reason why I, I guess I reach out to so many other kids right now yeah. because you know somebody you know gave up a lot to keep me here and you know, my mom passed in 2000, but we both, I was 31 years old when she passed, and we beat the odds on what a lot of people said God couldn't do. Yeah. So, um, you know, Curtis was like the big thing in our house. You know, Curtis attended the University of uh, Miami. Okay. And University of Miami, music scholarship, went on to sing professionally at the Metropolitan Opera's Kennedy Centers, uh, world renowned. Curtis is. Um, He's replaced Pulverade when he was alive. Oh, wow. Yeah, many different opera. One big opera is Idomene, uh, where Curtis uh, did the leading role uh, in Pulverade's place. And uh, on several occasions, when, when his knees would bother him, they would call my brother in and fly him in to replace Pulverade as one of the leading tenors. So, he, oh, I mean, he, yeah, he's um, he, he was kind of like the leader in our house because, you know, after he would come home and do a concert or do something at church or something like that, it inspired me to want to sign autographs. I never hesitate on signing autographs at all because I can remember Curtis as a kid, you know, you know, signing autographs and you know, so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something really big to to, to, to sign autographs and Hardy started playing football and I can remember as a kid uh, going to watch Hardy play football and my sister was always the one who threw the ball with me. So, you know, it was, it, was, it was almost like a family affair kind of kind of thing as far as music and sports. Yeah. Um, and then Lenars and Alfred. Lenars was, was big at the Urban League in Orlando. Um, attended the University of Florida. He was a Gator. Uh, Alfred went to the University of North Carolina. And my sister also went to the University of Miami. But, you know, you, you're talking six kids. My, my mom uh, handicapped at the time. My father only had like a sixth grade education. 
but he had a work that he had a work ethic of a Dr. Cum laude, you know? yeah. <laughs> but teaching you the work ethics of uh, you know getting up every morning, making sure this is done, making sure your chores were out of the way. Growing up in Orlando, we I mean we would go from you know I had a lawnmower business. I mean all the way through high school. You know, I had everybody yard in my neighborhood on lock. I mean, that's why some of the kids, I'm like, my God, if I had some of the tools that I have in my garage, I'd have everybody yard, no, you know, no steel. Doubt, man. But, uh, you know, my dad, we, I mean, we picked oranges. I mean, a lot of oranges. Uh, made a lot of concrete. Uh, made a lot of mud. A lot of driveways. You name it. Uh, well, how old was you when she had you? Uh, I want to say 33, 34. Okay. Yeah. And, um. You know, it, it, it was a big deal in that time because in '68, the surgeries for that type of uh, procedure wasn't, you know, wasn't all proof. Yeah. And uh, they removed the tumor, but it left her left side paralyzed. But you know, me and mom, I mean, we had a bunch of times together, going through recruiting, and you know, just every time, you know, I, I stepped on the field, I couldn't get on the field comfortably enough until I saw her. Yeah. Did she get to come to a lot of games? Oh, every game. Right. Every game. She was at every game and. Uh, in high school, she watched. She would watch me like a hawk. I can remember we played against a big team in, in Orlando, out of Winter Park, Florida, Winter Park High School, and there was a big defensive end there that was really noted for playing both ways, like I was. And I kind of, in the fourth quarter, I, I I I stepped at him and missed him, and I started crawling at him, and I was crawling at him, and I tripped him up, and uh, what. You know, after the game, your parents come pick you up, and I got in the car. She said, "I saw you crawling at that kid, and you better be glad you got him down because I was gonna wear you out." <laughs> it's like, man, you know, it's like you are something else. Now, I got cut from the Washington Redskins when my, my first year in the league, and I came home and I was, you know, nursing a sore ankle, the same ankle that I hurt my senior year in college. I'm nursing this ankle, nursing this ankle, and my mom had this lark machine that she used to ride, a lark machine, it's like a scooter. Okay. Man, that woman would get my big foot up out of that bed and, 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 and get on that machine, and, and we'd run through Orlando, and like we, she'd run it till the battery was dead, right. making me stay in shape, because she knew I would go back that following year, and I did. I went back to Washington and made the team that following year. And uh, you know, played five years in the NFL. I didn't know that. Yeah, five years. Right? Yeah, five years in the NFL, and then went to Canada and played another nine. Yeah. Well, where did you call home then? Right here in Alabaster. Oh, do you? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Never yeah. My outreach is right here in Alabaster. Um, we're we're now looking for you know a building so that this summer not only can we do athletic workouts, I want to do music appreciation. Tutoring systems throughout the summer for kids with reading problems, math problems. So we got a lot of a lot of stuff in the file. Our yeah, Christian Base Outreach, uh, we're five hundred one c three organization. Just just giving back to the kids. I mean, because I got kids, and I, I mean, I would love for somebody else to outside of the house to step into their lives with a positive reaction and give them some, because I, it takes a positive reaction outside the house to influence a lot of kids. Yeah, I mean, we can, our, our parents inside the house can be A1 okay, have everything lined up in, in a row, have all our ducks in a row, and still our kids will listen to a positive influence outside of the house sometime before they do inside Absolutely. the house. I have a lot of kids, a lot of following, and that's what I do. I mean, try to be a positive house influence in their life. And I consider it an honor to oh, meet yeah. you, Thomas, and appreciate you coming out and uh, supporting the calls today. Uh, and look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.